Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's the playoffs 2008, and boy, are we happy to be back on the football field after a week's rest, a bye in the first round of the state 7A playoffs tonight. The Russell Crimson Cyclones, 8-2 and two on the year, host the Fort Smith Northside Grizzlies, who are 8-3 and three on the year. Northside, of course, uh, formerly a conference opponent of the Cyclones back when both teams played in the old 5A West. Now, of course, Russellville in 7A Central, Northside in 7A West. And the teams, the captains are meeting at midfield in the first round of the playoffs. You see, of course, for the Cyclones right there, Jared Vincent's number 45. 65 is Logan Humphrey. 21 is Kenneth Golden. And number 89 is Terrell Carter with the uh, towel across his shoulders. Looks like he's going in for a heavyweight prize fight tonight. And that's exactly what it's going to be. Northside, tremendous offensive football team. Tremendous uh, quarterback. The coach, of course, is Daryl Henry, who's done a tremendous job at uh, Fort Smith High School, Fort Smith Northside High School. Of course, there's Northside and Southside in the Fort City. And, of course, Jeff Holt, head coach for the Crimson Cyclones. And let's see exactly what they're going to do for the start of this game on the home turf of the Cyclones. Glad to be at home for this first round. Cyclones are going to receive and defend the north goal while the Northside Grizzlies will be kicking and defending the south goal. The playoffs are here, and of course you can put everything else aside. Now it's one game and out. You lose in the playoffs, the season is over. The Cyclones, of course, into the regular season after winning the first eight games, they lost to Conway, and then a real heartbreaker losing to Cabot. But because they came in as the second seed from the 7A Central, they had a bye in the first round, and now face the Fort Smith Northside Grizzlies. The Grizzlies, big winners, 56 to 12 over Van Buren in the first round of the playoffs. So Northside showing they have got plenty of offensive muscle. The Cyclones, of course, have that great defense and something's got to give tonight in the first round of the state playoffs. It is a chilly night. You can see the cheerleaders with their mittens on. Many of them have uh, ear coverings. And I'm sure for a lot of the Cyclones, they wish that was steam coming out from uh, underneath the Cyclone Trench instead of uh, just fog, just smoke. But here come the Cyclones onto the field in their home red with black pants, white numerals, and black helmets. Might mention that uh, Northside has a couple of Fort Smith Northside products who are of course, a part of their coaching staff, Bill Breedlove and Billy Joe Relford are both members of the coaching staff who are former uh, Northside products anyway. And Bill Breedlove, of course, uh, played at Arkansas Tech University. Billy Joe Relford was quite a running back in his days for the Northside Grizzlies also. The trainer is an old classmate of mine, Sherry Riggins. Back from uh, our days, and of course, uh, being at Fort Smith in those days, that was uh, when Sherry and I were at Fort Smith in high school. That was the last year of when Fort Smith, uh, all the high school students went to the same high school before the eventual split to North Side and South Side. So uh, you can see just how cold it is, even. Even Coach Holt is wearing covering for his ears tonight. Just inside of the headphones. And boy, it is a frigid night. Playoff 
Weather at its best, I guess you could say. Look at the cheerleaders. They are bundled up tonight. They've got the warm-ups on tonight instead of the, uh, the skirts. And so here come the North Side Grizzlies to kick off. Looks like Zach Morehart going to kick off. And it is picked up by Kenneth Golden right up the center of the field. Good run back. Almost broke it before the kicker, Morehart, made the stop. So Kenneth Golden with the return. Let's look at it on the instant replay. Almost went down and got that one off the shoe tops. Made a nice run. Had some good blocking up front on special teams. And again, the kicker came on and made the stop. So the North Side Grizzlies go on defense and the Russell Crimson Cyclones with Barrett Hughes at quarterback from the 37 yard line. First down 10 early, first quarter, first drive, first play from offense. Give it off to Golden. Not a whole lot of room, but he fights forward, keeps those uh, feet moving out to the 43, maybe the 44 yard line. From ground level on the instant replay. This has been a bread and butter play for the Cyclones all year long. Golden at 195 pounds has the strength to keep that pile moving. The stop was made by Samaj Edwards, number five. Second down, Tanner Keeling now in the ball game, a true eye formation and they give it off to Golden once again. And Golden slides forward to the 47 yard line. Again, it is Samaj Edwards, number five, who made the stop. It's going to be close to a first down, and the officials are going to call timeout for a measurement. The first two plays, straight handoffs to Kenneth Golden, and he's been the bread and butter back for the Cyclones this year. Kenneth Golden, 5'8", 195, and he has proven that uh, he's not just speed, that's what he had, of course, a year ago, but he can run tough inside also. And that's a first down by more than half the length of the football. Watch Sports Watch On Demand on www.imcdtv.com anywhere in the world. No matter who wants to watch or where or at what time. So the Cyclones bring... The football team up to the line of scrimmage with trips left. Three wide receivers split to the left-hand side. Barrett Hughes, the junior quarterback who has done a great job this season, steps back, throws it out in the flat. That's to Haley. And Haley across midfield and down just into Grizzly territory at the 49-yard line. It's that quick screen. Toss it out to the halfback. You got a couple of blockers already out there. And that gain was about four yards, so it's second down and six. Kenneth Golden remains the single setback behind Barrett Hughes. Wide receiver left, that's the narrow side of the field. Receiver here to the bottom of your screen is split right. Hughes changing the play now at the line of scrimmage. From ground level. Give it off, Golden. Got some running room down to the 44-yard line of the Grizzlies. And the stop is made by Jeff Grimmett, a junior. 6-1-254 from the defensive line. Number 51, Jeff Grimmett. It's a third down, and you can see where they need to get on the sideline there. They've got just about a yard to go for first down at the Fort Smith Northside 44 yard line. Had some good up front blocking this last time. Let's see if they go right back to Golden again. They do, and he's got enough for the first down. Should be. Samaj Edwards, number five, slipped over and uh, tackled Kenneth Golden from behind, but should be enough for a first down, and Golden giving that indication also. First down for Russellville at the 42 yard line of the Northside Grizzlies are dressed in white 
Red numerals, red helmets. Russellville's colors are red and black. Northside is red and white. Three wide receivers come to the near side. That's the wide side of the field. On this first down play, no score here in the first quarter. Russellville and Northside, second round of the state playoffs. Give it off to Golden. Nice cutback and able to dive inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Smosh Edwards tripped him up. And finishing the play was uh, Tevin McElwee, 6'3", 230-pound defensive lineman, number 97. Football at the 39 of Northside as Russell has just moved right down the field. Only throwing the ball one time. The rest of the time, it's been straight handoffs to Kenneth Golden. Guess what? He's going to get it again. Oh, they faked it, faked it. And Hughes going to carry the football himself. Made a nice move there, and he's run out of bounds about the 36-yard line. Oh, there defensively was uh, Tyler Springwater, the linebacker, six foot one ninety-five. And after all that running, the gain was only two yards. Still third down five. Football at the 37-yard line of Northside. That's Dave Robinson, you see. Coming out, he'll be split to the near side of the field. Golden the deep back. Give it to him. And he's got some running room down to the 29, the 28-yard line. That's plenty enough for a first down. Stop made by Tyler Springwater. As we look at it one more time from ground level, great up front blocking by this Cyclone offensive line. And Kenneth Golden really able to find some running room down to the 29-yard line of Northside. First quarter action, Russell took the opening kickoff, and they have marched right straight down the field. Back to a straight eye formation with Tanner Keeling, the fullback. Bring Haley in motion and give it off to Golden once again. And Golden finding more running room inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. And again, that's just meeting strength with strength. The offensive line of Russellville firing off that football. Moving the north side defenders. And Golden running to a spot. Picking his way down the field. The football's at the 23 of Northside. Twin receivers right. And the I formation in the backfield. Barrett Hughes brings Haley in motion. Play action. Throws out to Haley. He's got it. And then the ball. Well, they say he never had control of it. Looked like he started to run downfield before he really had full control of it down around the 16-yard line. He was looking for pay dirt. Brings up third down and four. First quarter. Again, this is the initial drive of the game. As Russell took the opening kickoff, and they've had the football ever since. Twin receivers right. No one is split left. And Golden is the single deep back. Hughes. Gives it to Golden, and Golden pounds his way down to near the 20 before he's pushed back. Northside's Daryl Thompson, the linebacker, 5'7", 174, made the stop. Fourth down and three, and that means time for Zach Hocker to check in. Blake Robinson will hold. It'll be a 39-yard field goal attempt. Place it down at the 29-yard line, plus the 10 yards of the end zone. And the kick is up, and the kick, it is good! A 39-yard field goal by Zach Hocker. And Russell has drawn first blood. 
and lead the Fort Smith Northside Grizzlies by a score of three to nothing. Cold night, what a toe, back in a moment. Well, the Cyclones used up more than six minutes on the clock on this chilly night here at Cyclone Stadium and walked away with a three-point advantage on the 39-yard field goal of Zach Hocker. And I'll tell you, Zach has got to be someone that people have got to start paying attention to. He's only a junior and give him another great year. I mean, with his kickoffs, he's almost automatic with the extra points and great on field goals. Another year, he's got to be considered one of the uh, top prospects in the state as far as uh, in the kicking department is concerned. So here's Hocker, who again, I don't think uh, for most people that he was exactly a household word a year ago. Or even when the season began less than three months ago. And Hocker drills this one. And guess what? Nobody's going to run that one back. Six yards deep in the end zone. Charles Carter, the senior running back, went back there, tried to field it. But there's no running it out of the end zone. And so the very explosive, very talented, and very confident Russell Cyclone defense on the field now. But this is an explosive north side offense. Let me say, uh, let me tell you that for sure. Looking, throwing out of the backfield, incomplete. That's Daxton DePire. He's a senior quarterback, 5'10, 174, and he can throw the football, let me tell you. But that one came up a little bit short, so DePire in the backfield with him is. Charles Carter. DePire wants to throw the football. Now he rolls right. On the run, throws. Incomplete. So it brings up third down and 10. As DePire and the Grizzlies come out throwing the football, Russell ran the football very successfully, I might add. And now DePire forced into a third down and 10 situation. Throws underneath and uh, falling down to make the catch was number one. That's Allen Johnson, the tight end, six foot 182, number one. But that's not near enough for the first down as he slipped down. And it was only a three yard gain, and Northside will have to kick the football away. So Russell's going to get the ball right back after forcing Northside into a three and out. And a fair catch signaled for by David Robinson at the, look like the 45 yard line. That's where Russell will start. It was a short kick. And still 4.58 left to go in the opening quarter with Russell leading by a score of three to nothing. It was only a 32 yard kick with no return. Handed off to Golden, tries to slip to the outside and not anything there, loss on the play. Stop made by Donovan Sanders, the sophomore. 5'8", 175. Loss of one. Second and 11. So we said this is the state playoffs. There is no tomorrow unless you win the 2008 playoffs and we'll be with the Cyclones all the way. Back, Hughes throws out and it's batted up and incomplete. Looked like big number 97, Tevin McElwee, 
Got his paw out there and batted it away on the pass off the hand of uh, Barrett Hughes. So the football remains at the 44. Third down and 11. Hughes will now line up in the shotgun with twin receivers left and right. Hughes, shovel pass underneath, but Northside smelled it out. They got it to complete to Kenneth Golden, but making the stop was Donovan Sanders, number 34, and Russellville will have to punt the football away. As a matter of fact, they uh, came up losing three yards on that series back to the 42. So Zach Cocker will try to give it a ride now and pin Northside deep. Here late in the first quarter with our score, Russell 3 and Fort Smith Northside 0. Hocker awaits the snap. And it's in the air, a driving kick. And going to be taken inside the 15. Turn out to the 20, maybe the 22-yard line. That's Allen Johnson. And uh, Jared Vinson made the stop for Russellville. So Northside will have its second uh, chance at the football offensively. Russell had a long drive to begin the ball game, but uh, went three and out this last time. So again, DePire. Daxton DePire, number 10, from the shotgun. He hands it to Carter, and Carter couldn't get very far as uh, Trent Leslie there to haul him down, number 41 for Russellville. Short pickup out to the 28, maybe the 29-yard line. So it's still going to be a about six yards to go for first down. Three wide receivers left for the Grizzlies. DePire wants to throw that way. Going to air it out. And nice catch at the 50-yard line. A big catch turned in by Kenneth Roberts. Bradford Webb had coverage, but it's enough for a first down out very near midfield. Matter of fact, the nose of the football will touch the 50. Three wide receivers now split right. Buyer from the shotgun. Fakes to Carter, wants to keep it himself, but that was not a good move. He ran right into Terrell Carter. So no gain on the play. Football at the 50. No gain for the Grizzlies. DePire from the shotgun. Throws out. It is complete. And down the sideline, Terrell Carter. Well, he got away finally from Carter after Carter had slowed him down. Trent Leslie, one of those making the stop finally. On Andres McKinney, the senior, split end 5'7", 186, number 33. The gain was to the 44 of Russellville. It'll be third down and four after a short pickup. DePire throws out of the backfield. It is complete. And maybe close enough to a first down. Jared Vinson made the stop. Catching the football was Arthur Poole, Jr., number 25. And it's close enough that the officials want to take a look at a measurement on the football. See if they picked up the 10 yards. It's very close. They'll bring the chains in from the far end of the field. Gives us a chance to thank our football playoff sponsors, including St. Mary's Regional Medical Center, Drs. Johnston and Richardson, and EADS North America. That's a first down, but just by the hair of their chinny-chin-chin. So at the 40-yard line on a really brisk 
cold, cold Friday night at Cyclone Stadium. It's the first down for the Northside Grizzlies as the Cyclones continue to lead three to nothing. Whoa, DePire, he's in trouble. Got away from the first rush, but not from Kitchens. Kitchens able to recover and make the stop after DePire dropped the snap. Let's look at it again on instant replay. DePire went right through his legs. Now he's running for his life. Looks like Russell has him there, but he's able to squeak out. But uh, Kitchens comes back and does the cleanup work. And the football at the 46. Back to Pyre. Fires out of the backfield. That is complete. And a big gain. It'll be close to a first down down at the 31-yard line. Bradford Webb made the stop on Arthur Poole. But that's close to a first down. Going to be a little shy. Third down and a yard for the Grizzlies. At the 31-yard line. DePire is going to keep it himself. He's got the first down. And much more down to the 23-yard line. Before he stopped by Logan Pruitt, number 35, a junior. It's a first down for the Grizzlies. DePire from the shotgun wants to throw. Fires down the middle. And uh, incomplete. And it was apparently intended for Allen Johnson, but it was thrown wide to the target. Second down and 10. Late first quarter, Russell leads 3 to nothing over the Fort Smith Northside Grizzlies in the 2008 playoffs. Action coming from Cyclone Stadium in Russellville. DePire throws right. And it's complete. Nice gain. Down near the first down. Arthur Poole made the reception. Chase Wetzel made the stop, number 27. Third down two for the Grizzlies. But before we get another play underway, that's the end of the first quarter with our score. The Russell Crimson Cyclones lead the Fort Smith Northside Grizzlies 3-0. Cyclones have a 3-0 lead as we start the second period, but the Northside Grizzlies are driving. And so that is defensive coordinator Coach McNabb talking to this great Russellville defense. I said it before, and I will continue to say it. There are several, several of these young men who should play football at the next level, at the college level. So here's DePire. Football at the 14-yard line. Gives it off to Carter. Carter running hard to the 10 and down to maybe the 9-yard line. Logan Pruitt made the stop, number 35. And they're going to place it just about the 10-yard line. So it'll be a first down for the Grizzlies. As the Grizzlies now threatening to take the lead in this football game. Early second quarter from Cyclone Stadium. Back down the middle. The pass is complete. Dallin Johnson for the north side touchdown. Johnson the tight end with a nice reception underneath. And with 11.33 left to go in the first half. The visitors on the scoreboard. The north side Grizzlies take the lead at 6 Two, three. This should be Zach Morehart to attempt the extra point kick. He's the left footed kicker. And there's a hold up for a moment. You know, I mean to tell you, on a night like this, as cold as it is, you do not need to hesitate long. Need to keep moving as much as possible. So here is the junior, Zach Morehart, to attempt the extra point kick.
There's the snap, and the kick is down, and the kick, it is good. The Northside Grizzlies lead the Russell Crimson Cyclones by a score of 7-3. to three. Early second quarter from Cyclone Stadium. It's the playoffs 2008. Well, the Cyclone defense, a rare occurrence to see them scored on. And now the Crimson Cyclones deploy to receive this kick from Northside and get the football back and hopefully will have an opportunity to regain the lead. Now trailing 7-3, to three, they led 3 to nothing after controlling the football for most of the first quarter. But Northside with a nice 76-yard drive takes the lead here in the early moments of period number two from Chile Cyclone Stadium. Zach Morehart getting ready to tee it up and kick it away for the Northside Grizzlies. And this one will be taken at the 10 yard line. Bradford Webb with the return and the stop being made by Chavez Clements. A sophomore linebacker. And that's where Russellville will start. First down and 10. And there's a flag on the play. Apparently an illegal block has been called against Russellville on the return. So that's going to cost Russellville some yardage from the 25. And now the walk-off. It'll be half the distance to the goal, I believe. And that's where they're headed, back to the 12-yard line. Well, they placed it down at the 13. So the Cyclones will have their backs against the wall. You can see the big G of the goal line right there behind them. Twin receivers left and a single receiver in the backfield behind Barrett Hughes. Cyclones trailing 7-3. to three. Play action looking. Throws out and too tall for Stephen Gebhard. Coverage by Antonio Jones, number three, but incomplete. Second down and 10 for the Cyclones. Trying to extend their season another week. They're already 8-2. For the first 10 games, which places them ranked in the top 10 statewide. Trips left, three wide receivers left. Kenneth Golden in the backfield as a single setback behind Barrett Hughes, who's under center. Bring it to the near side, got some running room is Golden. Golden will simply step out of bounds after a pretty good run. Got to the corner in pretty good shape. Run out of bounds around the 20-yard line. They mark him out at the 19-yard line, which would be, well, they put it back at the 20. Now, at the 20-yard line, the gain was about seven yards. Russell coaches paroling the sideline. Heavily wrapped up tonight against the cold weather. True eye formation, twin receivers are split right. Tanner Keeling is the fullback. Bring a man in motion, that's Haley. And give it off to Golden. Golden got some running room there. Out near the 30. Nice individual effort by Kenneth Golden. Let's look at him here on the instant replay. Sees nothing outside, cuts it back inside. Slowed there. And finally, he is dropped by Tyler Springwater, number 29. Football at the 29-yard line. That's David Robinson split right. Northside leads in this contest early in the second quarter, 7-3. Hughes throws. 
complete to Robinson. He eluded, well, almost got away from the first man, but not quite enough. He slowed him down. That's Steven Johnson. The gain is up to the 34, maybe the 35-yard line. The 34 is where they'll place it. Second down and six. I think both these teams doing a remarkable job of holding on to the football in really cold conditions. Hughes audibleizing at the line of scrimmage now. And gives it to Golden. Golden punches his way for another tough yard. That's just about all. Stop was made defensively by the Grizzlies' front wall. Looked like Brandon McReynolds, number 94, in there to make the stop. So it's a third down and still about four. Cyclones have to get out to the 40-yard line to uh, get a first down. And that ball is knocked away. And I believe they're going to rule it as an incomplete pass. Said uh, Hughes was in the motion of going forward when it was knocked away. It looked like big number 90, Alonzo Relliford. 6'4", 260-pound sophomore, got in there and knocked that uh, football out of the hand of the Russell quarterback. And for Barrett Hughes, lucky he was moving the arm forward. It was ruled incomplete. So Zach Cocker will kick the football away, and he can really let it out on this one. And it takes a Russellville roll, 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 roll down to the 11-yard line. Good job by Zach Hocker on that kick. Got the Russellville roll, and it will be at the 11. First down and 10 for Northside, leading in the football game by a score of 7-3. to three. Big Dave Stewart right there on the front wall for the Cyclone defense. Terrell Carter. These are names that have become household names here in Cyclone Country this year. So DePire, Paxton DePire from the shotgun wants to throw. Fires and incomplete. Really, Josh Morosco almost intercepted. The pass was intended for Chavez Clements. Well, let's make it no. Andres McKinney make that 33. Andres McKinney was the intended receiver. Second down and 10. Twin receivers left and twin receivers right for the Grizzlies. DePire gives it to the ball carrier. That's Charles Carter, who gets a uh, pretty good running room. Brought the football out to the 20 yard line. And that should be enough. Well, it's still a little bit shy of the first down. Third down one for the Grizzlies. DePire gives it off to once again. That was Charles Carter carrying the football. Should be enough for a first down. It is, and Northside will continue their current drive. So from the 25 of the Grizzlies, throw back left, it is complete. And then hog collared by Jared Vincent was the receiver. Let's look at it again on instant replay. Quick throw out of the backfield, a quick screen. But Jared Vincent and big David Stewart put the stop on that one. From the shotgun. The pyre throws, and it's complete. Allen Johnson out of bounds, about the 40 or 42 yard line. And again, Northside with a good job of 
bringing someone underneath after the area has been cleared by the initial receivers going deep. And he's been able to find people like Arthur Poole and others on the sideline. Back to throw to Pyre. Now forced out of the pocket on the run. Throws on the run and almost intercepted. Josh Morosco there to break it up. Let's look at it again on instant replay. Nobody to throw to, so DePire rolls right. Now finally wants to throw and fires. And uh, incomplete. He was trying to get it to Arthur Poole, number 25. But the penalty will be against Russellville. Midway through quarter number two with Northside leading by a score of seven to three. So it was a holding penalty against the defense and the football moved down to the 45 yard line. See where they place it, 47 yard line of Russellville. DePire wants to throw and nothing doing. Kitchens brings him down. Marcus Kitchens, let's look at it again. DePire looked up, no place to go. Kitchens fought off his block and drops him at the 45 yard line. He got around Samaj Edwards, number five. Football now at the 46 yard line of the Grizzlies. DePire. Looking, wanted to throw the screen underneath, and he saw it was completely covered. The intended receiver was Charles Carter, but uh, really, DePire just threw that one into the dirt. Third down, 17 for the Grizzlies. They lead in this football game 7-3. DePire wants to throw the football. Now forced out of the pocket. Now running for his life. To the 50. And he stood up there and he's going to be dropped. Kitchens. Vincent uh, slowed him up. Terrell Carter. Also there was uh, Addison Walker, number 44. So it's a fourth down and nine situation. 7.03 left to go in the first half. And the uh, football. At the 46 yard line. It's a high kick and David Robinson will field it with a fair catch and Russell will take over first down and 10. Late stages of the first half. With the Northside Grizzlies leading the Russell Crimson Cyclone 7-3 in state playoff action. Sec state 7A football action. The winner will go on in the playoffs. The loser, the season is over. That's what it means to these two teams tonight. They both want to play on past this week. For Russellville, Blake Robinson now in the ball game at quarterback, and he runs straight ahead. Use those long legs. And the stop was made by Jeff Grimmett, number 51. So the Cyclones move to their other junior quarterback in Blake Robinson, who hasn't seen a whole lot of uh, QB activity this year. He's done all the holding on extra points and field goals. Three wide receivers are split right. Barrett Hughes back in the ball game at quarterback. Rolls right. Gives it off to Golden and there's nothing there. I mean, he is. He was looking for red jerseys and all he saw was white. Tyler Springwater led the trio of tacklers from the Grizzly defense. 
5.50 to go in the first half. North side seven, Russell three. You see it there on the scoreboard. The winner continues in the playoffs. The loser heads for the basketball court. Haley, Gebhard, check into the lineup. Barrett Hughes from the shotgun. Throws complete to David Robinson. Bounces off one tackler. Tries to get a little bit of room and does uh, get back a little bit of it. And the stop made defensively by number 90 is Alonzo Relliford. So it wasn't enough for the first down. Almost a loss. And Zach Cocker is checked into the lineup for the Cyclones to punt the football away. And it will be a line of scrimmage that will be the 21-yard line. So Hocker can uh, really get all the yardage he can get here. From the 21. Hocker with a good snap and the kick is away. And it is a dandy sense. Oh boy. Johnson had to go all the way back to the 32 yard line and fall on it just to make sure that he could come up with it. So at the 32. About a 42-yard kick with no return. Nice job by Zach Hocker. And now here's Dupire in at quarterback once again from the shotgun for the Grizzlies. Second quarter, 7-3. Dupire wants to run and does find a little bit of running room. Picks up two or three off the left-hand side. Jared Vinson reached his hand out and slowed him down. Gain of, four, second down and six. Gain of almost four, second down and six. DePire throws out here left. Gets it to Poole. And oh, Poole is... He ran into a clothesline. Lucas Frazee over there to make the stop. Pool on the reception and the gain out to the 41-yard line, but he got tackled pretty high. Wasn't a face mask penalty, however. Get off inside, and Carter just dove. Charles, I believe that's Charles Carter, trying to run the football, and he slipped down, and when he cut back, he just dove for what he could get, which wasn't much. But will it be enough for the first down? That is exactly what... The officials want to find out what everybody here at Cyclone Stadium wants to find out. So they'll bring the chains in. And we'll see if the Grizzlies have picked up a first down here late in the second quarter and the Grizzlies lead by a score of seven to three. Well, it's gonna be short of the first down by a few inches. About four or five inches. So they replace uh, the football near the center of the field. So it's just short. And the Grizzlies are forced into a fourth down here on their own end of the field at the 42, but they're going to go for it. And they're leading 7-3. to three. So here's DePire. Number 10, the senior quarterback for the Northside Grizzlies. Uh, trying to maybe pull Russellville off sides with a Fake snap count. Now he looks over to the north side bench. Russell stays in their stance. 
Uh, DePire is just standing there. And now it'll be a timeout. Timeout called by Northside. Late in the first half, Northside 7, Russell 3, back in a moment. Two fifty-three on the clock before the end of the first half. And you're looking in at ground level. You know, you can't get these kind of views and shots even at the game live. Great job being done by our camera crew, our expert production staff, and there are the cheerleaders working hard to keep the spirits high for the Cyclones and their fans. So Russell deploys back onto the field. Northside's already there. Northside was trying to uh, coax Russellville into uh, coming across the line, and a penalty would give them a first down. Now they have changed into the punt formation. David Robinson is deep. High snap, but the kick is away. But it's a short kick, and will be down at the 35-yard line. At the 35, it'll be first down for Russellville at that point. And the Cyclones will have the football trailing in the football game by a score of 7-3. to three. Trying to get some offense going here late in the first half. That's Stephen Gebhardt who is split right. David Robinson is split left. Hughes gives it off to Golden, who cuts back, and, well, he was able to pick up a couple of yards. Who was that that reached their hand out and slowed things down? I believe that was uh, Zach Morhart that slowed Golden down as he crossed the line of scrimmage. May have been Tyler Springwater. Not much of a gain, about a yard or two. Back, roll away from Barrett Hughes. Now forced out of the pocket, but there's no pocket there to be forced out of and dropped for a loss. Tevin McElwee, number 97 and number 90, Alonzo Relliford, able to jump in there and get a sack on Russell quarterback Barrett Hughes. Timeout, back in a moment. One fifty-five to go in this first half with the timeout. Russell has a 39-yard field goal from Zach Hocker for its only score of the first half. Northside had a pass completion for a touchdown. It was a 10-yard touchdown pass. And that's the difference in the football game right now. One team with a touchdown, one team with just a field goal. And the fans bundled up on this chilly night here at Cyclone Stadium. Three wide receivers are split right. Barrett Hughes wants to throw the football. Screen pass back to the near side to Kenneth Golden. 30, 35, and out to the 40-yard line. That could be enough for a first down. Stop was made by Jeff Grimmett, number 51. And we'll see if it's enough for the first down. And there's a timeout on the field. And with timeout, we'll be right back. One thirty-two on the clock before halftime. Northside 7 to Russell 3. Some more of our great sponsors, Simmons Bank, Posey Printing and Marketing Company, Turnkey Business Systems and Innovative Industrial Solutions Incorporated. Well, it's a fourth down after the nine yard pickup, but uh, fourth down and five, and Hawker with the kick. It's a short kick, and it just kind of dies right there at the 33 yard line. And that is where Northside will have it with under a minute and a half left in this first half. Yard 
So from the 34, Northside will have it, leading 7-3. You see it on the clock there, 127. Head coach Jeff Holt and the coaching staff hoping to keep it right here and go in just four points down. And running for his life and being dropped by Terrell Carter for the sack. DePire just couldn't get away from him. Good blitz put on by the Cyclones, and there is Terrell Carter. Trent Leslie was also in there, putting pressure. Also helping out was Grant Michener, but that's a big loss on the play for the Grizzlies. Three wide receivers near side. Throwback weak side, it's complete. And the gain is a short one. The pass was complete, and the tackle made by Addison Walker, number 44. Third down, still 15 to go for the Grizzlies. DePire in the shotgun. Steps up, throws downfield, and it's incomplete. And the pass was intended for Kenneth Roberts. Uh-oh, there's a flag on the play. Roberts, second time thrown to in a row. And it is pass interference against Russellville. So that stops the clock and moves the football downfield. And it should be a first down for the Grizzlies. But the main thing is it keeps the ball in Northside's hands and it moves it a little closer toward the Cyclone goal line. Place it down. At the 46-yard line, it'll be a first down for Northside. They're still 54 yards away from Paydirt with just over a minute to go. DePire. And the officials still... Yeah, they're not quite sure of something there. They're going to have a little discussion. Now they're ready. So DePire back. Going to be under pressure again. Trying to elude the pressure away from Terrell Carter. Now throws it downfield and throws it away. Again, the intended receiver was Kenneth Roberts, number 14. But DePire was just trying to get the football thrown away in a infraction against the Grizzlies this time. Well, trying to keep that defensive line away from the quarterback to Pyre. Apparently, Northside held, and that pushes them way back. Oh my goodness, back to the 24-yard line from the point of the foul holding against Northside. So that gives them about a half a mile to go for a first down. So here's DePire. Gives it off to Carter. Charles Carter and Carter is wrapped up. Dropped by looks like Addison Walker. Number 44, the junior. And that's going to do it. That'll be the end of the first half with our score. The Northside Grizzlies of Fort Smith leading the Russell Crimson Cyclones by a score of 7-3. to three. An exciting second half is coming up, though. Hold on. It's 2008 playoff action for the Cyclones.
The captains come back to midfield as we get set for the second half and the Cyclones have got to get some offense going here if they want to continue play in the 7A playoffs. With Northside leading 7-3. to three. Scored on a 10-yard pass. That has been the only score, the only touchdown in the first half. Russell scored on a 39-yard field goal by Zach Hocker. Cold and wintry night here at Cyclone Stadium. Really cold, but uh, guess what? The playoffs continue and it might get colder. So we go through the latter stages of November and early December. And now Northside is going to receive and defend the North Gold to begin period number three. And the Cyclones here gather for final instructions from head coach Jeff Holt. They've got to get some stuff put together offensively to get back into the lead in this football game. 7-3 to three your score. Not a whole lot of offense. The defenses have pretty well uh, dictated what has happened here in the football game. So we'll see what uh, the coaching staff, what wrinkles they've come up with to try to kind of break this loose. Again, Russell came into this uh, playoffs. They got a first round bye by being the second seed in 7A Central. They entered with a record of 8-2. and two. Northside, with a record of 8-3, and three, came in after a 56-12 victory over Van Buren in round one of the playoffs a week ago. Head coach uh, Jeff Holt counting noses. Make sure he's got <laughs> all 11 <laughs> for the kickoff team. And you get that great view from right there on the sidelines from our expert camera crew. Thanks to our sponsors, St. Mary's Regional Medical Center, Doctors Johnson and Richardson, EADS North America. Also, our thanks to Liberty Bank and Sorrell's Body Shop Incorporated. And here's Zach Cocker, who has the only points of the first half. Again, that on a 39-yard field goal. So let's see. With Hawker kicking out of the south to the north. And this is a line drive. Gonna be taken, oh, at the one, and then the official said he put his foot into the end zone. So Charles Carter not able to run that one out, even though that was not the best Zach Cocker kick we've seen this year. They had the same result of forcing the Northside offense to start at their own 20-yard line. So let's see if the defense can put a big three and three and out on the Northside offense and get the ball back for the Russell offense and see if they can get something going. But here's DePire at quarterback. Charles Carter is the single running back. Throw it out of the backfield. Complete. No, oh, incomplete. Well, another case where in this case, Arthur Poole was trying to run with it before he actually got a hold of the football. And it's incomplete. A little quick screen. Poole 5'7", 156, and he can fly, but you got to have possession of the football. Here's Dupire, throws underneath, and it's incomplete. Bounced off a receiver's was off of Allen Johnson's uh, shoulder pads, and DePire had to get rid of that football in a hurry. He was under pressure. Jared Vinson was in there, amongst others. Third down and 10. And this vaunted Russell defense flexing its muscle once again. So here's DePire. From the shotgun. Throws out. And uh, just a short gain, maybe a yard. Let's look at it again, an instant replay. Almost picked off here. And Terrell Carter making the stop. And it's going to be fourth down. 
So only a yard on those three plays for the Grizzlies, and the defense does its job, and David Robinson stands deep to receive this kick. Northside with the kicker standing at his seven-yard line. And we're going to have a whistle on the play. Did we have a Russellville player get across the line of scrimmage a little bit too quick? We'll see. No, it's a false start. False start on north side. So that's going to push them back a little bit further. Back to the 16 or 17 yard line. Where uh, Julian Hernandez stands to kick the football away. And the ball over his head. Back and nothing doing. Terrell Carter tackles him. And let's look at it again on instant replay. The snap is high. Gets over Hernandez's hand. He tried to reach it with one hand. Now he tries to kick it. And boy, Terrell Carter bounces him out of the way. And Northside just falls on the football for a safety that looked like that was Samaj Edwards who was able to get in there and fall on the football. He didn't even try to run it out. We'll be right back. Well, just one minute has elipsed or eclipsed its way into the third period. And already the Russell Cyclones find themselves Stopping the north side offense, forcing a high snap, which resulted in a safety, which results in two points. And now the free kick coming. Zach Morehart, who does the place kicking, will kick it away from the 20 yard line. He could punt it if he wanted to, but he decides to place kick it to kick it off. So a strange turn of events gives Russellville two points. And from the 32-yard line, here is Bradford Webb back to the 40 to the 42. The stop was made by Daryl Thompson, number seven. So there from the 42 or the 43 yard line, the Cyclones have the football and you can already tell that they're fired up. They've put two points on the board. They only trail north side by two now. It's seven to five. It's a baseball score. Hughes throws complete. David Robinson to the midfield stripe. Let's look at it again. Play action, fake it to Kenneth Golden, throw out there. There's Robinson, caught it at the 47. Kind of slipped down, but was able to squeak his way underneath for another yard or two. So the football just shy of the 50-yard line. It'll be second down and four. And just shy of the midfield stripe. Single receiver left, twin receivers right for the Cyclones. From the shotgun, Barrett Hughes brings a man in motion. Ah, and they're going to blow this play dead. Kenneth Golden never did get really going full speed. I think he knew there was something wrong before he ever took the football. And that's a false start against Russellville. Moves it back to just inside the 45-yard line. So it's second and nine. Haley comes back into the ball game. Derek Haley, the senior, six foot one ninety. He goes split right along with Stephen Gebhard. Twin receivers come to the near side of the field. Kenneth Golden in the backfield, alongside quarterback Barrett Hughes. Bring Haley in motion to the near side, looking, wants to throw that way. Fires incomplete. Tanner Keeling, the intended receiver, and breaking it up with Zach Morehart, number twenty-eight. Third down and nine. Third and nine from the 45 yard line. The Cyclones looking for a score that would give them the lead, even 
a field goal here would give them a one-point lead at 8-7. to seven. But not quite into field goal range yet. Even with uh, Hawker's good and strong leg, they're not quite close enough to attempt that. And now there's a timeout called. Timeout for the Cyclones. They want to make sure. Trailing only by two, seven to five to the Northside Grizzlies. We'll be right back. Nine forty-four, third period. It shows on the clock from Cyclone Stadium. The Cyclones trying to get back on top of this football game and move on in the state 7A playoffs. Barrett Hughes from the shotgun wants to throw. Downfield, it's complete. What a grab by Stephen Gebhard. Zach Morehart made the stop, made a good tackle, but Gebhard with a nifty reception here. Here, let's look at it from ground level. Barrett Hughes is going to come right at you. Look at him make that turn in there. Sets himself, and he was pasted. But Gebhard holding on to the football. And it's first down for the Cyclones at the 44 of Northside. Under center. Give it off. No, it is Barrett Hughes keeps the football. Or is that Robinson? That's Blake Robinson in the ball game. So Robinson carries the football himself. Let's look at it again from the shotgun. Fakes it to Golden. Now he keeps it himself. Cuts back inside. and Finally stood up and forced back. Vernell Racy, number 74, number 51, Jeff Grivett made the stop. Picked up about three on the play. Hughes back into the ball game at quarterback. Looks downfield, quick throw, and it's incomplete. He had to throw in a hurry and threw short of Stephen Gebhardt. Coverage from Antonio Jones, number three. Watch Sports Watch on demand at www.imcdtv.com anywhere in the world and on the World Wide Web and on your computer. Third down with 8.42 left to go in this third period. From Cold Cyclone Stadium. Twin receivers go split left. Robinson goes split right. Hughes under pressure throws and it's incomplete and there's a flag on the play there's a flag and I didn't see a red shirt over in the area David Robinson's pleading his case that he was close enough but um, the official may have thought that may have been intentional grounding there was nobody in around pass interference. oh they're going to call pass interference against Russellville. It's hard to tell because the ball was not even in the picture. I mean, there was nobody in the picture close to the football. So who, who did the offensive pass interfering if the ball wasn't even thrown in that area? But at any rate, that's the call. The far side side judge made the call. And the uh, football placed back at the 44-yard line. It's also a loss of down. So the Cyclones back on their side of the 50 at the 44. So that didn't help, and now it's fourth down. And head coach Jeff Holt says, well, wait a minute. If it's fourth down, which it is after the loss of down, let's bring on the punt team. And here's Zach Cocker to kick the football away. So Hawker can put a good foot into this one. It's a good snap. And it's going to be a short kick, but it takes a little bit of a roll down to the 32. So at the 32, that's where Northside will have it. Still leading in the football game 7-5. to five, With runners on first and second and two out. Oh, no, that's the wrong sport, isn't it? 
It's a baseball score in the third quarter of a great football game. This is two good teams just duking it out. So here's DePire who has spent the entire night in the shotgun formation. Twin receivers are split to the near side. Matter of fact, you can see number one who is Allen Johnson. He's really just a little bit split, so trips right actually. And DePire wants to keep it himself, and Kitchen says not very far. So Kitchens makes the stop. The gain is out to the 35 yard line. A couple of yard pickup for DePire. Allen Johnson comes to the near side, and you can see uh, Poole. He split along with two others left. That's the way that DePire wants to throw, but now he's forced out of the pocket. Terrell Carter giving him chase, throws underneath, and it's complete. And uh, down to the 46 or the 47 yard line, complete to Kenneth Roberts who made a nice catch from a scrambling Daxton Dupree, or Depire, And that's enough for a first down. And you gotta give Depire a lot of credit. He threw that one under duress and running for his life. And then a nice uh, catch and run by Kenneth Roberts. First down, pass, incomplete. Again, that's intended for Roberts. He dove for it, but it popped out incomplete. Second down and 10. Seven to five, Northside leads in the playoffs. 2008 second round, Russell had a first round bye. Northside defeated Van Buren 56 to 12. Low scoring affair here so far. The Pirates gonna keep it himself. And the ball pops loose. The pyre was hit and popped loose, and Marcus Kitchens comes up with it. Let's see if we can see who caused it here. Here's DePire coming right up the middle. And I, I think that was big David Stewart. Whoever caused it, Marcus Kitchens came up with it, and Russell gets a big turnover and a big boost emotionally. 7.32 left to go in the third period and Russellville trailing 7-5. to five. And you can hear the fans, they are really excited. Under center, Hughes gives it off to Golden. And Golden slices and dices his way across the midfield stripe. So a short pickup, but uh, Kenneth Golden, the workhorse, back. Picks up about three on the play. Gets it into north side territory after a big fumble recovery. And the usually sure-handed Daxton DePire coughed that one up himself. Roll away. Uh oh under trouble. And Barrett Hughes just throws that one away. Over there was Golden. He tried to get it to Golden. And incomplete. And he was really under pressure from uh, Tevin McElwee, number 97. So he just tried to unload it. Lucky that anybody was even in the same county. So third down and seven. And both these defenses, I mean, tell you, have come to play tonight. Boy, I mean, tell you, they're causing havoc on these offenses. Robinson goes split right. Back. Barrett Hughes throwing. Oh, incomplete. Intended for Stephen Gebhardt. And I'll tell you what happened there. Antonio Jones jumped up and he thought he was going to intercept it. And he may have gotten just the line of vision interrupted enough where Gebhardt couldn't bring it in. So it brings up a fourth down and seven from the 49-yard line. And Zach Cocker will kick the football away. We've had some exciting near misses here in the third quarter. Seven to five the score. The Cyclones still trail the Northside Grizzlies by two points. 
And the kick is away. Taken on the run by Allen Johnson and his return back to the 25-yard line before he is rudely awakened and uh, met by the Cyclone special teams. Here's Johnson catches it on the full run. Lucas Frazee pushes him there and that's, I think that's Jared Vinson right No, that was Tanner Keeling, 48, who stopped him cold and the rest of the Cyclone. There's Jared Vinson, 45, at the end of the play. But Keeling, with his 250 pounds, stopped Johnson in his tracks and the rest of the Cyclone special teams then caught up to the play. Here's DePire firing and... It's complete out of bounds at the 39-yard line, or is it incomplete? Incomplete pass. Incomplete. Apparently caught it out of bounds. The uh, pass was intended for Andres McKinney. Second and 10. The Pirates kept flinging that football tonight. Give it inside to Charles Carter, and Carter is no, going nowhere because another guy named Carter made sure. Terrell Carter. Terrell Carter and Addison Walker in on the tackle. 44, Addison Walker also in there on the plate. 27 yard line. So from the 27. Pyre kind of going on a quick count right now. Looking. No, everybody's covered. He's being forced out of the pocket. Gets loose. Rolls. And incomplete. Oh, Josh Morosco just couldn't hold on to it. The pass was intended for Andres McKinney. Let's look at it again on instant replay. Trying to go downfield to Pyre. No place. That's, all of his receivers are covered. Now he's just running for his life. Grant Mishner barely misses him there. Comes and finally throws on the run. And you can see. Josh Morosco almost came up with that. He is so upset <laughs> that he didn't get it. So here's Hernandez to kick the football away. Gets a good snap this time. And the fair catch by David Robinson at the 45-yard line, and that's where the Cyclones will start. Actually, the 44. Cyclones still trail 7-5 late here in the third quarter. Let's see if the Cyclone offense can get something going here now. 5.43 left to go in the third quarter. Cyclones do not have a touchdown in the ball game. They have a field goal and a safety. Northside has a touchdown. So, so far, the one touchdown trumps the field goal and the safety. Give it off. Golden. Turned around and not much room there. Picked up a couple of big yards. Number 90 is Alonzo Relliford. He made the stop. And the pickup was about three, second and seven for the Cyclones. But you're so close here, you don't really want to get out of your game plan. You're only down by two. You know if you can get about 30, 40 yards downfield, you're definitely in field goal range, which Hawker then could kick your field goal and you're back in the lead. Russell led three to nothing at one time. Give it off to Golden. Golden finds some running room down to the 43 yard line. Of Northside, let's look at it once again from ground level. You see the blocking up front by this Russell Cyclone offense doing a great job. Let's pinpoint here, not the only one, but Logan Pirtle. You can see him, 6'1", 255, make a great block on that last play when we had the instant replay. But that's just an example of the kind of upfront blocking this Cyclone offensive line has been doing. Stop was made finally by Daryl Thompson, number seven. Barrett Hughes throws out in the flat, incomplete. Throwing intended for David Robinson and almost a lateral, folks. Almost. Zach Morehart was over there to cover. Second down and 10. That hastens back to a should have been called lateral from another game that we're familiar with. So 
So to the near side, David Robinson. Looks like Gebhardt split far side. Hughes gives it off to Golden. Golden slowed down a little bit, but great running right straight up the middle. Zach Morehart again makes the stop, but let's look at it again. There just wasn't anything here, and the offensive line gave him a little bit of a crease. And uh, I'll tell you what, give good credit that time to Logan Humphrey, the offensive center. 5'11", 250 for a great block, and that's one of the great things about Kenneth Golden. He's able to pick his way. He sees those blocks so well and uh, finds his way through that maze. And that was a pickup of six yards. Makes it third down and four. Give it off to Golden. Sprints down for the first down. Carrying, as a matter of fact, Alonzo Relliford, number 90, about the last three yards. Let's look at it again. This is just a straight handoff, straight up front blocking, and Golden decides to break it to the outside, then back inside. Look at Relliford. Look at him carry Relliford. And Relliford is 6'4", 260 pounds. That'll show you how strong Kenneth Golden is. It's a first down at the 30. Cyclones driving for a go-ahead touchdown. Hughes gives it off to Golden again. Not anything there, so he just kind of finds the sideline. You see the clock moving. 3-10 left to go. Third period. North side 7, Russell 5. Boy, both these defenses have really played well tonight. And there's been uh, some pretty good offensive plays in between the goal lines, but nobody can get across the goal line very much. So Hughes up to the line. Has Robinson right. Gebhard left. Now they flip-flop the tight ends. Hughes gives it off. Golden streaking. He could go. Just tripped up at the 10-yard line. Otherwise, it was a touchdown. Zach Morehart save the touchdown. Let's look at it from ground level. Great up front blocking. Look at this sprint. And oh, just a shoestring away from going in for the score. Let's give credit to 73 that time. That's Jordan Frazier. 5'11", 296 senior made a great block on that play. So just outside the 10. Cyclones knocking on the door. They want to take the lead. Late third quarter. Northside 7, Russell 5. Great run by Golden. Give it to the man. Hits to the five-yard line. Spins off down to the one. Boy, Golden, he is fired up. And he was not going to be stopped. He was really hemmed in at the five, and he just kept them feet moving. Look at it from ground level. Give it to the man. Golden. Stop there. He just would not go down. And I'll tell you what, Tyler Springwater, 29, had him in a bear hug, and he just wouldn't go down. Great job by Kenneth Golden. That was just individual effort that time. From the one-yard line. Give it to him. Stop short of the goal line is Golden. Boy, he has carried the mail tonight. Just short of the goal line. Kenneth Golden, we have a timeout on the field. On the officials to see if it's a first down. Russell did have a first down just outside the 10. So conceivably, they can get a first down inside the one, yet not score the touchdown. So that's what they want to find out. So they stretch the chain, and the foot is in the way. It's still just a ooch short. Just short of the first down marker, third down and inches. So third and inches for a first down, third and uh, maybe a foot for the touchdown. 
And look who's in the ball game. Big David Stewart lines up at a tight end. And there's Tanner Keeling in the backfield, too. There's a lot of beef in that backfield. Let's see if they go back to Golden. They give it to him. He stopped, but uh, the Cyclones say he was in for the touchdown. Let's see. Yes! Yes! Cyclones score! One by much. Let's look at it from ground level. Well, there's a pile of bodies that dove in there. And there's Golden. He was stood up, but he did fall into the end zone. Just barely in, but it counts. And Russell is taking the lead 11 to 7. So Zach Cocker now to try to make it a 12 to 7 ball game, a five point lead. Zach Cocker had to attempt the point after. But Russell is taking the lead by four, 11 to 7. Snap down and the kick. Ooh, this one's no good. Very unusual for Zach Cocker to mix, miss an extra point, but he does there. But the lead remains, Russell 11. And the Northside Grizzlies 7. The Cyclones have retaken the lead, and we'll be right back. 10 plays, 56 yards on the drive for Russellville. Capped off. Just over a minute to go in the third period, and the Cyclones did come out fired up to begin the second half and have scored the last eight points on a safety and on a touchdown. We'll call it a one-yard run by Kenneth Golden, more like a one-foot run. But the Cyclones have the lead at any rate, 11 to seven with just over a quarter to go. And the Cyclones have got to feel a whole lot better about going on in this state football playoffs now. They've only allowed Northside to score one time on a 10 yard pass play. The defense has played great. The offense has put just enough points on with this touchdown here, that's the only Touchdown of the night for the Cyclones. They have a field goal and a safety. And here's Hawker's kickoff. And uh, forget that. That's over Charles Carter's head. Nine yards deep in the end zone. And Northside will take over at their own 20-yard line. First down and 10. Just a little over a quarter to go. Just about a minute to go in the third period. One of these teams will go home and will end its season. The other one will go on in the state football playoffs. Who's it going to be? DePire throws out. Has to pool and pool. Makes the most of it. Gets out to about the 23-yard line. Lucas Frazee over there. Let's look at it again. Quick out pattern. Marcus Kitchen slowed him down. Here's Frazee coming over. And he got some help. Second down and seven, north side. Three yard pickup for uh, Arthur Poole. Throw back left. They get that to Charles Carter. And Carter forced out of bounds. Close to the first down. Terrell Carter running Charles Carter out of bounds. But it's enough for a north side first down. And the Grizzlies right up to the line of scrimmage. No huddle offense. Reset the uh, down and distance. Give it off to Carter and Carter able to get uh, about five on that play. And down at the bottom of that pile making the stop was uh, Aaron McConnell, the junior, number 47. Five yard pickup and Northside with that no huddle right up to the line of scrimmage. Back. DePire wants to throw down the middle. Oh, almost complete. Just a little long intended for Andres McKinney. He was in the seam. If that would have been thrown good, that could have been big yardage. Into the third period. The Cyclones have the lead. 11 to 7. Go into the fourth period. Hold on, everyone. Well,
Well, the Cyclones have got to be happy. You're looking at defensive coordinator McNabb talking to that Cyclone defense that has been so tough all year long and tough here again tonight. But the Cyclones feeling a lot better at halftime with 7-3 Northside into the third period, 11-7 Russellville. So the Cyclones had a good third period. Let's see if they can tack a good fourth period on top of that and get ready to move on in the state playoffs. Third and five north side from the 37. DePire throws. It was partially tipped, but got out there to Arthur uh, Poole. Lucas Frazee was the first one to hit him there. Not much of a pickup. It's going to bring up fourth down. You can see Chase Wetzel urging the fans to stay in the ball game there. So here is Hernandez, Julian Hernandez to punt the football away. Julian Hernandez in the punt for Northside. David Robinson. David Robinson, you see him there waiting to return it. And a fair catch. Taken right there by David Robinson. Boy, he's had sure hands all year long. At the 39, that's where Russell will start, leading 11 to seven, a very scant four point lead. But a lead it is. They were down by four, now up by four. And we're in the final period. We're going down the home stretch, coming around that old clubhouse turn down there at Oaklawn Park. Under center, Barrett Hughes. Gives the ball. Who else? Kenneth Golden out to the 45. And this time, Zach Morehart made the stop. Let's look at it from ground level. And Morehart took the worst end of this exchange. Ooh, you can see it right there. Boy, he did. He took it right under the chin strap. And he did not feel good after that one. So, almost a six yard pickup, but we'll call it second and five. Give it off Golden. Boy, has he been a workhorse tonight. Picked up maybe a yard or two right there. Stop made by Daryl Thompson, number seven. Good sportsmanship there. Thompson helps the uh, running back, Kenneth Golden, up. And I'll tell you what, you know, we've seen a lot of good sportsmanship through most of the games this year. That That's good to see. This is a game, remember? I mean, it gets very competitive and it's very physical, but, you know, after they uh, finish, after the final gun sounds, it's a good time to shake hands and make friends and acquaintances on those other teams. There's Golden. He pounds his way once again. Guess who made the stop? Zach Morehart. Came right back at it. That's a first down for Russellville, and what a workhorse. Let's look at it again from ground level. What a workhouse workhorse Kenneth Golden has been tonight. More than even usual. I mean, they've really just put it in his hands and said, go for it. Not a whole lot of passing tonight, just a whole lot of ground game. Twin receivers are split left. Barrett Hughes gives it off to Golden once again, and Golden slashes his way in there. They hit him high and low. Donovan Sanders hit him low. Darrell Thompson hit him high, number seven. First to make contact for Northside. Gain of one. Second. Only a gain of one. Game of the 46, but in Northside territory. Cyclones trying to do two things. Take time off the clock and continue moving toward that Northside goal. Maybe get an insurance touchdown here in the fourth period. Points have been few and far, have been few and far between and hard to come by tonight. Hughes. Gives it off, guess who? Golden again. Boy, he's going to be sore tomorrow. Diving in there. Stop made by Jeff Grimmett, number 51. Picked up maybe two more. Down to the 44. Correction, gain of three. Third down and seven. 
Third and seven, and uh, really it's been the old three yards and a cloud of dust. Tonight for the Cyclones, they have unusually kept the ball a lot on the ground against this north side defense. Not as much passing as they have in previous games. But head coach uh, Jeff Holt said they went really back to a lot of basics in the off week. Back, here's Hughes. He's going to go downtown. And jumping for it and incomplete. David Robinson made a heck of a... Heck of a try at that one. Defending on the play was Stefan Johnson. Maybe a little bit too much air underneath that one because they had to wait on it and kind of jump for a rebound there. Fourth down and seven. Football at the 44-yard line. 7.50 to go in the ball game, folks. Zach Cocker in to attempt the extra point kick. Or I should say the punt. Well, we wish he was trying an extra point kick. And the kick away. And this one. Oh! The receiver, Johnson, thought by holding his hands up at the 10 and the ball going over his head that it would go in the end zone. But Hocker puts that punt on the money in a little bit of uh, old back English at about the two or three, and it rolls dead at the four. What a great punt from Zach Hocker. I mean, that makes those college scouts drool. I mean to tell you, he's just a junior, but they're, I mean, they're looking. So that pins Northside, woo. Back at their own four yard line. There's DePire, you can see he's standing in the end zone. He rolls right. Under pressure. Oh, he is met by Darrell Carter. He was ambushed. Another safety. Boy, that makes the highlight tape. Send that to ESPN. Look at this. Look at, here's a freight train coming. Kaboom! De pair. He didn't know that train was coming. Wow, 7.34 to go. We got to recover from that. We'll be right back. Well, that might have been the hit of the year. My word. If Terrell Carter is sending out a highlight tape to any colleges, make sure you put that one in there. Here's Morehart to kick it away after the safety. It's 13 to 7. Well, Cyclones have put 13 points together in a most unusual way. A field goal, two safeties, and a touchdown, a missed extra point. From the 29. Golden with a great return. Down to the north side 40. Well, the old tide is beginning to turn. Here's Golden. Look at him just kind of hesitate. Wait for his blockers. And just kind of weaves his way. And a great return and Russell in position just inside the north side 40. And the Grizzlies are reeling right now. They've just taken a major right cross to the head. And they are reeling. And that last safety was a major, major blow. Three wide receivers left. Cyclones lead 13 to seven. Give it off, that's Jason Walker. First time we've seen him tonight down the sideline and bumped out of bounds about the 35. Knocking him out of bounds was Donovan Sanders, number 34. Let's look at it again. Walker with good speed. Look here, he finds a little block. Got it from David Robinson, then turns the speed out, and Zach Morehart finally takes his legs out from underneath him at the 35. Boy, oh boy. This place is still a buzz. The safety and the great return from Golden. Now I formation Tanner Keeling in the ball game at the fullback spot. Bring Haley in motion. 
Give it off. Walker's drop for a loss. Nice penetration there by Tevin McElwee, number 97. Drops Jason Walker for a loss, just as Jason was about to break it to the outside. Loss back to the 37. Third down and seven. I tell you what, this Northside ball club is a good ball club. 6.50 to go. They're uh, not 8-3 and three for nothing. But the main thing tonight has been they've only been able to score one touchdown on this Cyclone defense. They are a high-powered offensive football team. Back. Hughes. Whoa, what a catch there, or is it incomplete? Intended for Gebhardt, and Gebhardt came down on his on his neck. That's the second time he's been upended tonight, and I'm not sure he knows where he's at. That's Derek Haley over to see if he's all right, and I think he's he's seeing shades of butterflies right now, and a few cobwebs coming loose. So it might want to get him over to the sideline. Tried to make a great catch again. So here's Zach Cocker into the ball game. Football's at the 37-yard line. Last time that Cocker punted, the ball rolled dead at the four. So here's Hocker once again waiting for uh, Bradford Webb. And a little confusion here, so a little timeout going to be called. And with timeout on the field, we'll be right back. Cyclones getting a little excited about continuing in the state playoffs. Kind of forgot who was supposed to be where there for a minute. Head coach Jeff Holt said, let's settle down, make sure everybody's supposed to be in the game, supposed to be in the game. And here is Hocker to kick it away. And he can kind of pooch kick it down there now. Try to put another one inside the 10. The snap is good and a little pooch kick. Gonna roll, 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 roll. Well, not quite inside the 10, but down to the 12. Good job again by Zach Cocker. Again, puts Northside deep in their own territory. And I'm not sure whether DePire, Daxton DePire, wants to come back and meet Terrell Carter again. If he does, he wants to know the number of that truck before it heads his way. Well, DePire, he's a tough customer. He's out there. Gives it off to Charles Carter, and Carter gets out to about the 14-yard line. Charles clock moving, and every tick of the clock is a tick in the Cyclones' favor right now. Three-yard Three pickup, and the Pirate decided he wanted to let uh, Charles Carter have a little bit of that Cyclone defense. The Pirate back, and oh, he almost got tackled again. Throws downfield and incomplete. It was intended for Johnson. Bradford Webb, the ones met the ones, was intended for number one, covered by number one. Look here, he's almost got tackled again. That was Trent Leslie that almost wrapped him up. The Pirates going to hear footsteps for the next week. And the pass intended again for Johnson, incomplete. DePire back to throw. Gonna air it out. Throws downfield. It's intercepted. Lucas Frazee, 20, 10, and down at the seven yard line. Lucas Frazee, and the floodgates are opening. DePire looks. There's Frazee. Look at him step in front. The pass was intended for Andres McKinney. And here's Frazee, he's looking for pay dirt. But finally drug down from behind at the seven yard line. Oh, the Cyclones will be set up first down to 10, but what have we here first? 
The officials are discussing things here. Now, yeah, illegal use of the hands. Apparently on uh, the return. We'll move the football back to the 29. But the Cyclones have the football. That's the main thing. So at the 29, Russell with the football and a 13-7 lead. But again, the defense turns in a big turnover right there. High formation behind Barrett Hughes. Give it off to Kenneth Golden. Golden is shoved back by Tevin McElwee. Tevin McElwee leading the way for Northside. Gain of one. That clock, five, 16 and counting. Cyclones with the football deep in Northside territory and with a 13 to seven lead. It was seven to three at the half in favor of Northside. So it's been 10 unanswered points from the Cyclones. And following the interception, they have the football again. There it is. Give it off to Kenneth Golden and Golden down to the 25 yard line. Well, oh, Golden has carried a bunch of times tonight. 94, Brandon McReynolds, senior, 217 pounder at 6'3, number 94, made that stop. Third and six for the Cyclones. As Russell just tries to hold on to the football, maybe punch in another score. Getting close to Zach Cocker. Field goal range here. He's already kicked a 39-yarder in tonight's game. Hughes wants to throw. Rolls near his side. Throws off that back foot. Down and uh, incomplete. Pass Robinson incomplete. David Robinson was the closest receiver, but it was not uh, not real close. Blake Robinson checks into the ball game at quarterback number ten. Fourth down. And there's Zach Cocker. It's Robinson will hold. This is uh, from the thirty-two, so it'll be a forty-two yard attempt. We said Hawker has a 39-yarder, so we definitely know this is within his range. With the Cyclones leading 13 to seven. And that kick was blocked. So the Northside Grizzlies will take over after blocking that field goal, and that keeps Northside's hopes alive because a touchdown and an extra point would give Northside the lead. That field goal would have negated that possibility. So the Grizzlies still have a life late here in the football game. They're not out of it yet. Cyclones feeling good about moving on in the playoffs, but they're only up by six. Again, a touchdown and an extra point would give Northside the lead. So DePire looking to throw, forced out of the pocket, now gonna run with the football, tucked it under with a good run. Oh my goodness, 50, 45 to the 42 yard line before Chase Wetzel brings him down. Well, we told you just don't give that high-powered offense any leeway. And whistles on the play. We're going to have a timeout on the field, and we'll be right back. Alan Johnson was the injured north side uh, Grizzly who hobbled off. Looked like maybe an ankle injury. But a big run from DePire and now Northside's got some momentum. Rolling right. DePire waiting. Throws. It is complete. 
Ball popped loose. It's still on the ground. Who's going to come up with it? That was a completed pass, I believe. Russell says they have it. Russell does have it. Let's look at it again. Here's the pass from DePire. He's forced out of the pocket. Great defensive pressure. That's Terrell Carter there. Grant Mister in his face here. Throws. And that is complete to Charles Carter, it looked like. Now, the, see, he's not down yet. The ball rolls away, rolls through a north side hand. That was uh, Andrus McKinney, and then a dive for the football, and Russellville has it. First down and 10, the defense comes up with another turnover. They credit the recovery to Lucas Frazee. And let me tell you, what a great recovery for that senior in the playoffs. Number 16, 5, 9, 160, Russellville. 3.23 to go in the football game, and they just give it off to Golden once again. I don't have a count on the number of carries, but that's got to be around 30 for Golden tonight. Timeout on the field. With timeout on the field, we'll be right back. Three fourteen to go in this football game. Russellville 13, Northside 7, but this one is far from over, folks. You saw how close Northside came to... They got that big run from DePire, then got the completed pass. It was just a fumble there. Off the hands of Charles Carter. Otherwise, Northside could be knocking at the door right now with a go-ahead touchdown. So it's not over yet. Cyclones have got to play solid football here for the next 320 or 314 is what's left now. Fortunate Southside 28, Little Rock Catholic 6. Want to mention also in that offensive line, Mitch Hall. Sophomore, 6'6", 282. He's going to be around for a while yet. All that offensive line has done a great job. Tight end, Demarius Neal. Give it off. And diving straight ahead. That was Kenneth Golden once again. Gain five on the play. So at the 30, we have another timeout on the field. And guess what? We're going to take a time in for these messages and be right back. Our thanks to Sorrell's Body Shop Incorporated, Liberty Bank, Innovative Industrial Solutions Incorporated, Turnkey Business Systems, Simmons Bank, EADS North America, Doctors Johnson and Richardson and St. Mary's Regional Medical Center, our football playoff sponsors. Thank you so much for being with us. Guess what? Hold on. We may be with you at least another week or maybe more. Barrett Hughes gives it off to Golden. And Golden just lowers his head and tries to get to that first down marker. Stop was made by Daryl Thompson. It's going to be short. And a timeout for Northside. Back in a moment. Three oh two left. As Northside has tried to use their timeouts to force Russellville into giving up the football and giving them a chance at a go-ahead score once again. And it is fourth down. Northside's going to get the football back. And they got dangerously close to scoring the last time they touched it. And again, it's only a six-point lead for the Cyclones. Quick snap. Hawkers kick, a driving kick. And it's going to roll dead about the 30-yard line. Just outside the 30. So Northside has 70 yards to go for the tying touchdown. An extra point would give them the lead. But the Cyclone defense has been tough, tough. 
The safeties, two of them. Interception, yes, Lucas Frazee. Fumble recovery, yes. So it's been a big night. Well, a big night for Lucas Frazee tonight. Here's DePire, still with life. Throws, ooh, incomplete. Frazee with a big hit there. Let's look at it again. Pass was intended for Kenneth Roberts, but just as it got there, look here, boom. Ball would not stay in with that. Second down and 10. Yes, that was little bell ringer that time. The pirate throws out of the backfield, complete. That's Charles Carter. Jared Vincent finally ran him down. Number 45. The game was out to the 37 yard line as Northside lines up quickly. Give it off to Charles Carter and Trent Leslie brings him down after a short gain. Northside huddles up, gets the line of scrimmage as quick as they possibly can. Time is running out. And we have a timeout, uh, looks like maybe for a measurement. The officials call a timeout. That helps Northside right there. Football just outside the 40 yard line. So they'll take a look, see if it's enough for a first down. Northside will still be almost 60 yards away from pay dirt. And it's just short. How many of those just shorts have we had tonight? Fourth down and inches. Big Dave Stewart steps, steps into the lineup on this fourth down and inches. He's going to clog up the middle. Watch Sports Watch on demand at www.imcdtv.com. Tell your friends no matter where they are in the world. So a big play in the football game right here. Fourth and inches. Daxton DePire, he's gone all the way quarterback for Northside. Officials holding up play. All right, now they have the chain set. Fourth and inches, DePire's gonna take it. Now, is he gonna make it? I don't think he made it. Marcus Kitchens was the first hit, and there's Terrell Carter, there's Big David Stewart, and he's well short. He never got even close. So the Cyclones will take over. The Pirates said, I'm going to take it myself. And he does step up here, but look at, boom! That is Kitchens who slows him down as David Stewart hits him high, I believe. No, that's Trent Leslie hits him high there. 2.08 to go, and the Cyclones have the football, and they just want to run the clock out. But that's a lot of clock left to run out. I formation. Golden's carried the ball a lot of times tonight. He's going to get it one more. Nothing there. Stop made defensively by Daryl Thompson, number seven, and 97, Tevin McElwee, number 97. Lost a little bit on the game, on the play. Loss of a little bit. Be second down in about 11. But the clock is moving. And that's the, that's the major plus factor right now. Head coach Jeff Holt, calm, cool, and collected. At least he looks that way outside. You know he's got to be excited. The Cyclones can hold on just a little while longer. They're headed on to round three. Hughes, give it off to Golden, and Golden pounds it out. Never did go down. Pile's still moving. They finally blow the whistle. Guess who's falling down? <laughs> Kenneth Golden. He said, I'm not going down. And they give his forward progress. Not where Kenneth finally wanted to be, but at the 33. 
yard line. Third down at about four. They run as much clock as they can. You can see it there. 39 seconds. May have to run one more play. We'll have to run one more play, but that may be it. And Hughes. Wait. And now a timeout is called. Well, we'll take it with them and come back for the final seconds of this one. Well, you're looking at a happy huddle right there. Cyclones just have to hold one more play and they will win in the playoffs of 2008 and go on for a third round game on Friday night. Been a great ball game for many, many Cyclones tonight. Kenneth Golden, what a game carrying the football. Lucas Frazee. What a hit from Terrell Carter. Some great punts from Zach Hocker. Great engineered night from quarterback Barrett Hughes. Now they're in the victory formation and Hughes will just take a knee and that'll be it. And that'll be the ball game. It has been a struggle tonight. A very good north side team. At one point led 7-3, to three, but the Cyclones scored the last 10. And a great effort from the Cyclones here at Cyclone Stadium. You see it. It's on the scoreboard. It's official now. Russellville 13, north side 7. We're headed on to round 3 of the state playoffs. This week's Players of the Game, brought to you by Advanced Collision Solutions. Offensive Player of the Game, Kenneth Golden. Defensive Player of the Game, Terrell Carter. Special Teams Player of the Game, Demarius Neal. The Players of the Game, brought to you by Advanced Collision Solutions.